Hi, this is Tom Christie and welcome to my YouTube channel. I thought it might uh, be valuable to, we've done some carving videos and I just wanted to do a vermiculation video where we're using combs and pulling that through heavy paint to create simulated vermiculation on the side of a, like a pintail or a mallard. This happens to be a shoveler blank and that's what I had available. So that's what I'm going to use in the demonstration today. We'll look at um, sponging on base coats and then using combs. And I'll talk more about those in a minute to pull through paint and create vermiculation or simulated vermiculation on the side of a decoy. If you're uh, learning from the videos that I'm posting, and uh, enjoying the channel, please hit the subscribe button. That will make sure that you get any updated content that I post as we go forward. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, before we do any work on the actual decoy, I wanted to go through some of the materials uh, that you use in combing vermiculation. Uh, and there are a variety of materials you can use to comb a bird. You can buy um, like a soft gel medium from uh, companies like Golden and others. You can get them on Dick Blick. Uh, modeling paste, you can use a variety of things. What I use is actual paint and it's a mixture of Liquitex heavy body acrylic. This, this is burnt umber. Uh, probably 90% of that and then maybe 10% of Liquitex uh, gesso and then I tint that just a little bit with any kind of carbon black to give more of a neutral gray color and uh, this material is about the consistency of thin toothpaste and then I use a uh, a large brush to paint that on and then we'll go through that. This is a very inexpensive brush. This is like a Craftsmart or Crafter's Choice brush. So that's the medium we use, the brush we use. Now let's talk about sponging. I use a very cheap closed-celled sponge that you can get in packing materials. Closed-celled means kind of very fine uh, air bubbles in the sponge. And that gives me a texture that I like more than a real heavier, coarse texture on a decoy. So I, I'm going to use that. I'll show you how we use that or how I do it. And then um, you can purchase combs for combing vermiculation at uh, carving supply places like James Company. Um, I think Willie McDonald has combs for decoy carvers. These are combs that I've collected over many years from fellow carvers. You can see I, I even started with a, a plastic hair comb on a couple of decoys and uh, that works, but these are better. Um, at times I'll even make, this was for a Magnum um, Bluebill decoy or Redhead. I wanted a real heavy texture because it was a magnum bird. So I made my own comb out of plastic and you can do that as well. Um, so I just encourage you to be creative or you can purchase your combs. Now let's get to the painting, the application of these materials to the decoy and, uh, and then we can show how we simulate texture and vermiculation on a gunning decoy. Okay, we're gonna start out with the uh, with the shoveler decoy, and again, uh, shovelers have a little vermiculation on them, but again, this is just for demonstration purposes. And uh, I start with a wide, flat brush, and we're gonna go through sponging first, because before I vermiculate, I normally put a little texture on the bird. Uh, to me, I think that helps in the uh, vermiculation in the combing because it gives it a little base texture 
to hold on to the paint that you want to stay there as you comb off the paint that you don't want to remain. So I put a little bit on with the brush, as you can see, and then I put a material on my palette. This is a wax paper palette. You can buy it art stores, Dick Blick. Take the sponge and I'm going to really drive it into that material that's on the palette to really work it into the sponge before I start sponging on the decoy. And then this process is pretty simple. I'm just kind of tapping this on the decoy to create a little bit of texture. And again, you don't have to do it like I do it. This just happens to be the technique that I uh, have developed over the years and that I work with all the time. But you can, you don't have to sponge. You can try it without base coating first. This is just an extra step that I do. Now I'm going over this. You can go over it too much and basically knock out all the texture so it's smooth again. So it's kind of a fine line between how much texture you want to leave in the painting materials. So that looks pretty good. It's And really, I'm just driving for consistency. So you don't have spots where there's no texture and spots where there's real heavy texture. You want kind of a consistent finish. Okay, so I'm, I've sponged that. Now I use a, a, a hair dryer. These are acrylic paints and they dry pretty quickly. So I'm gonna dry this and then we'll come back. You don't have to watch paint dry and fall asleep. Okay, it's important you let that base coat dry or anything uh, that you paint on before you begin combing. Now, a, a couple of things to note. I've got a wet paper towel over here. And that's important because as we pull through this paint, paint is going to build up on the comb and then it will begin to redeposit itself on the decoy, which uh, makes for unclean uh, vermiculation. So I use a, a damp paper towel and after each stroke, as you'll see, I'm going to go over to this paper towel and wipe off both sides before I start the next line down the decoy. So I'm using this same material that we used for the sponging. And by the way, if you were not doing vermiculation, I like to sponge my birds anyway, except for the bill, because it puts a little bit of texture on the bird. And I, I, I do both. Some, some I do perfectly smooth, some I do textured. But uh, again, it's up to the individual. Now, I've got quite a bit of material on this flat brush and I'm just painting a relatively thick coat on the decoy and kind of pulling through it to distribute it as evenly as I can on the side of the, the side pocket here. And another important thing is you can't work too much space at a time. If you do, as you're combing back here, your paint up here will dry. If that happens, you're in trouble because the paint will start to uh, glob and tear uh, rather than give you a nice smooth line. So I've got some probably enough on here and this is kind of an iterative process. So I'm going to wet the comb a little bit. I'm going to start at the rear of the side pocket, put the comb down and begin to go back and forth because uh, vermiculation normally just isn't straight up and down. Now, I've got material on that comb. I don't want to go back here until I wipe it off. Now I've got a good clean comb and I can continue this. I'm going to go back up to the top. You can see I'm kind of doing some zigging and zagging, technical terms, not as I'm going through, wiping off, going back to the top of the side pocket. 
Most of the times you can't distinguish individual feathers on a bird, like a mallard, the vermiculation is real tight and the it, it all kinds kind of blends together. And we're doing a gunning decoy here. So if I were doing a decorative decoy, I would hand vermiculate all of this. But this is a real time saver and it's a very effective way to make a realistic looking vermiculation pattern on the side of your decoy. And you can see how quickly this is happening. If I was hand vermiculating this, it takes hours to do all of these lines. So now I've worked up to here. I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking so far. Hopefully you can see that in the video. And while the paint is still wet, I'm gonna go back and put more paint on. Try not to go over too much the, the vermiculation you've already put in place, the combing, but you do need to butt up against the combing that's there so that we don't have a, a distinct line between areas of vermiculation as you're combing. So I'm doing the same thing here. If you get too much or too little um, paint on, you'll begin to notice it. Either the vermiculation is disappearing as you're pulling through the paint or not distinct enough, or it's really uh, too much and you're filling up your comb too quickly. Again, I'm going back to the wet paper towel, clean the comb, and what that does is open up the the spaces between teeth again. Now I'm, you can see I'm overlapping that area that I combed before a little bit and blending that into this next area that I'm working on. And just, and I, I like the feathers are generally rounded and scalloped shaped. So again, I, I like to try to stay away from just in a in a quick gunning decoy, you don't have to do this level of um, squiggly lines and all of that. You can just pull some lines through there, and it'll still look pretty pretty good. But uh, this is what I would do for a competition gunning decoy. Again, it's a very quick way to simulate that vermiculation. I can wipe off between, go back to the top, pull down through. Now, as we get closer to the breast, these feathers are tending to go in this direction. So I'll pull my vermiculation a little bit in around the corner there to tie into the breast feathers up here. Again, I hope you can see that. If you get an area like this, this is just a good example where I've got a little, uh, I'm looking in the video to see if you can see it. I've got a little too much paint here. While it's still wet, just use a brush Pull that out of there so that you don't end up with a big clump of paint there that you that's going to stick out later. Now I'm going to I'm happy with that, so I'm going to hit it with the uh, blow dryer again because it's critical um, that this is super dry before we put any uh, paint over the top of it that might knock those vermiculation lines down. So I'll dry this and then we'll go on to uh, an area of the back just to demonstrate how, how you might do that as well. Okay, I've got that side pocket dry and that, that is critical because if you happen to hit that with your knuckle and it's wet, uh, the best thing to do at that point you know, if you've created a flaw in, in that smooth vermiculation, let it dry. Go back with a little additional paint and comb through that. Don't try to 
comb through semi-dry paint, it just creates a mess. Now I'm gonna pretend like this is a diver, uh, maybe a, a redhead that would have vermiculation on the side, kind of fine vermiculation. Let's say it's a bluebill, some vermiculation on the side. I want a little heavier, coarser vermiculation on the back. So to, to get that effect, I'm gonna go with a little heavier comb that'll give me heavier vermiculation lines on the back. And now I've dried this so I can, but I wanna carefully go up next to it and not blob a bunch of paint into the nice vermiculation job that I just finished. So I've given myself a little guidelines on where these uh, scapulars might come back and, and meet up with the tertials. And I'm very carefully going along this side pocket edge because if I don't get material down there, I'm not gonna have any vermiculation along the top edge of that side pocket. And I, I want it to be there. I'm checking the video to make sure you can see what I'm doing. So I'm not gonna try to vermiculate this whole back. You get the, you kind of get the picture, but I did wanna show you if you can use different combs to get different textures. Okay, so I've got my heavier comb. I'm gonna, this is, I'm gonna follow this line around. So I'm gonna start here, same thing. I'm going back and forth, little points, little arcs. And this is a case where I'm halfway through. I've got a lot of material on the comb. So just clean the comb before you continue. Kind of pick up where you're left off and go on around the corner. Gonna go back down to the side pocket. Do that again. If you feel like it's too heavy while the paint is still wet, you can go back in and kind of recreate the lines and do some different things if it's not looking right to you. You know, maybe there's a little too much paint down here and you want a little more distinct lines. Just go over it a few times and, and that has the effect of dragging more paint off that you're going to put over here on the paper towel and then you're dealing with less material on the surface that might give you a better, more distinct combing line. Sometimes I'll even use a couple of different combs. Let's just do that for the fun of it. Um, as I'm getting closer to the front, I can tell I don't have enough material on there, so I'm using my, uh, just by looking at it and through experience, I can tell I'm not gonna get a good combing line through there, so I'm adding a little material. Um, this is a little finer comb then, and that might happen as you get closer to the cape of a bird, the vermiculation tightens up a little bit. So uh, you don't want a hard line there between the two different sizes, but you might want to tighten this up as you get up closer to the cape. I just wanted to show you, you can, you know, have fun with these combs and get different effects uh, by varying the combs that you're using in different areas. You don't have to do that, it's just something you can do. So hopefully you can get a good look at, at that. Now I'm going to dry this and what I'd like to do is um, put some base colors on and just demonstrate how we'll pull over the base color with a darker value and highlight that vermiculation. Just another quick tip, um, if you have an area where, oh, I missed a little area that I would like to have combing in, no problem. Dry the paint again, then go back, put a little additional paint in there, enough to pull a few um, 
a comb through there and match up with the others. And you can patch little areas like that without creating something that looks out of place. Here's another tip. If, hopefully you can see this. If you get an area where you're not happy with the uh, vermiculation, maybe there's a little blob that a comb missed. I used the tip of a paintbrush like that and basically knock down the blob. So it's uh, because that blob is going to pick up the dark paint as we pull through there for highlighting the vermiculation. You can either do that or you can go ahead and uh, highlight it and then go back with a little paint and touch that area up. But I, I like to look at the vermiculation and clean it up a bit. There's another little area down there take care of now before the paint is dry. Once that um, combing has dried, then I'm going to pretend this is a Drake Mallard and I'm using a little light gray value. I'm going to paint right over that texturing, the combing, and block in this base color. I don't want to fill all of the combing lines with too much heavy paint, but I do need enough paint to cover thoroughly. So I'll go ahead and paint this side pocket, and then we'll let that dry, and then we can demonstrate how we highlight the vermiculation with a darker color. All right, I'm not going to try to be too accurate in colors and everything here. I'm just using a value of driftwood gray with a little burnt umber. I loaded up a um, flat brush with that mix and then over here used a paper towel to dab almost all of that material off because we just want to pull paint and hit the highlights here and not get uh, the paint's so wet that it tends to go down into the the uh, ridges. So I'm just using a light touch and begin to pull that brush across those ridges. And I just want to hit the top of the ridges. Use a light touch, kind of pull in one direction. And you don't have to do this all at once. You can build up the value of that by going back over it if you need to darken it up a little bit. So I hope you can see that. We're starting to get that vermiculation showing up on the side pocket. Pretty subtle but the vermiculation on a Drake Mallard is pretty subtle. Now, let me just demonstrate if, let's say you get your brush too wet, and I'm using the same mix, and I just go with a wet brush. You can see what happens, totally different effect. Too much water, Basically, it's pulling that watery paint off the brush and sticking it down in the crevices, too. And it gives you a real blotchy effect. So, can't emphasize that enough when you're dry brushing, vermiculation, comb vermiculation. Make sure the paint on your brush is almost not even there. Dab it off on a dry paper towel, and then you can you'll get a lot better effect. This is still too wet as I'm pulling through there. It's kind of smeary looking. So I'm going to have to dry this brush out or change to a different brush. Um, I'm going to use a little, uh, I'll come back and we're going to uh, pull through this vermiculation on the back so you can see the difference in the texture. Now that I've messed up my paint job, but I think that's important as we're demonstrating techniques Show how they can go wrong, too. So too much water or too much paint, you're going to get this type of result. Totally almost dry. The worst thing that will happen if you're too dry 
and too little paint on the brush, you won't get enough darkness and you can always go back and darken. Okay, now I'm coming back with a little bit of carbon black so it's easier to see and I want this to be a, like a bluebill a Scott diver back. And I've got the brush loaded and I'm pulling through that lightly. And you can see the, the heavier comb uh, definitely di gives you a different look. Kind of that diver back, scop back look that we're going for on a scop. And I can go in and darken that if I want. It's a little more black. This is that area where we combed a little tighter up near the cape. And then you can carefully go along that side pocket. And hey, if you whoop, if you pull into the side pocket, don't worry too much about it. Let the paint dry. Don't try to save that. In other words, let it dry. Go back in, put your base color over there re-pull over the vermiculation, uh, clean it up that way. You can also take a lighter value on a smear like that, and maybe you just go in between the ridges with your base light value color and clean that up. But the best thing to do is let it dry, come back at it. So that gives you an idea of uh, some ways you can mess things up. And hopefully you can avoid that and uh, the way that I comb, uh, hand comb of a bird to simulate vermiculation. I wanted to keep this video relatively short, but really hit the basics of combing vermiculation on a gunning bird because it's a really effective technique to simulate that vermiculation like on a live bird. Much quicker way to do vermiculation than uh, taking a detail brush and trying to do all of those by hand. So I hope this has been helpful. If it has, hit that subscribe button. And again, I appreciate you tuning in and give me some feedback. Hopefully um, these videos are helping people get started. That's my goal. Thanks.